Hello everyone! Today we are looking at the made-for-Netflix movie Invader Zim Enter the Florpus. This is, of course, a revival of sorts of the Invader Sim TV show from many years back, created by Jonan Vasquez, and starring the voice talents of Richard Stephen Horvitz, Ricky Simmons, Andy Berman, and Melissa Fawn. After mysteriously disappearing many years ago, Invader Zim has finally returned to conquer the Earth. But after he makes his triumphant return, he learns the horrible truth. His leaders, the Almighty Tallest, never planned to invade the Earth in the first place, and they only sent Zim there to get rid of him. This puts Zim in a deep depression, and he basically just gives up. And Dib celebrates, thinking he's finally won after all this time. But if it were that simple, we wouldn't have much of a movie. So of course, Zim pulls one last plan for world conquest out of his squeedly spooch, and this time, he might actually succeed. But his plan inadvertently opens up a huge black hole of madness known as a Florpus, which threatens to swallow the Earth. And it's up to Dib and Gaz to save the day. So a little background here, I did not see the TV show during its original run on Nickelodeon because my family was too cheap for cable, but I did get to see it many years later on DVD and just fell in love with it. Of course, I was excited to hear about the new Invader Zim movie on Netflix, but I was approaching it with caution because, even with Jonan Vasquez still involved, revivals do not always turn out well. Turns out my fears were unfounded because this was great. It's always a challenge to adapt something that was originally made for 15-minute episodes into a full-length movie, but they nailed it. Now, by movie standards, it is kind of short. It's only about 70 minutes, but at that length, it never has a chance to wear out its welcome. It did manage to do some new stuff, while at the same time still remaining pretty faithful to the original, I thought. The overall animation style is still largely the same. They got pretty much all of the original voice actors, which was impressive. Zim is still extra shouty. Gurr is still the adorable ball of nonsense we all know and love. Everyone in town, apart from Dib and Gaz, are still completely clueless to the fact that Zim is an alien, perhaps willfully so at this point, especially Professor Membrane. And it's still weird as hell in all the best ways, and still hilarious. Vasquez's sense of humor clearly has not changed much. But while it's hilarious, there are some moments where it gets kinda dark, especially Zim's depression. I was actually starting to feel bad for Zim, and no one should ever feel bad for Zim. And there's also Dib's obsession with stopping Zim, which... Ooh, that has not done him any favors. Imagine Dad Bod Thor from The Avengers. Now imagine something worse than that. Yeah, Dibs had a rough go. There are a few changes, a few updates, welcome ones in my opinion, and before I talk about these, I do want to mention I have not read the comics, so some of this stuff may have already been addressed there. Gaz has clearly evolved somewhat. She's a bit brighter, both in terms of the color of her character model and also her personality. Her clothing and her hair are brighter, and she actually opens her eyes most of the time. And her relationship with her brother Dib is a bit better. The sibling rivalry is still there. She will still take every available opportunity to torment him. But she does actually care about him. I think she always did, but now she's a bit more willing to admit it. And this totally makes sense. Sibling relationships evolve over time just like any other relationship. Professor Membrane's character model has also undergone a few changes, and for good reason. Those reasons apparently involve sharks, and I think the less we know about that, the better. And I don't think they ever actually made this clear on the show, but apparently their family name is actually Membrane. I always figured Professor Membrane was just his stage name on his TV show, but no. They also mentioned Gaz's full name, which is apparently Gazlene. Again, this may have been mentioned already in the comics. I should read those. And for once, for once, Zim actually comes up with a plan that has an honest-to-God chance of succeeding. Imagine that! And the fact that he is now a legitimate threat actually adds a lot to the story. And it only makes sense that he would eventually come up with a good plan after all his previous failures. Eventually, he had to have a good idea, if only by accident. Some of the highlights for me, like I said, I love the relationship between Dib and Gaz. And Dib's relationship with his father was great, even though his father is just completely incapable of understanding what is going on around him and Dib constantly being frustrated by that. That was hilarious. The arrogance of the Almighty Tallest was very funny. I love how they just constantly refuse to make even the slightest change in their plans, even though if they follow their present course, it will almost certainly kill them. There's a metaphor in there somewhere. Zim, I think, has one of the best lines in the entire movie. All this time I spent trying to subjugate the humans, and all I had to do was charge them for it. 
Again, there's a metaphor in there somewhere. And of course, pretty much anything Gurr did, especially the Peace is Nice song. Oh, I have had that stuck in my head for many days. Really, my only complaint about this movie is that I don't have more Invader Zim. 70 minutes wasn't enough. I must have more. I need it or I will explode. That happens to me sometimes. So in case I haven't made this perfectly clear, I love this movie so much. If you're a fan of Invader Zim, this is absolutely a must-see. If you've never seen Invader Zim, it might help to watch just a few episodes of the show first just to get a little primer. I think it's on Hulu. But if you go in cold, you're probably fine. And that's all I have to say about Invader Zim. Enter the Florpus. Till next time, take care.